I want to bring in the treasurer. I think he's with us now. Josh Frydenberg joins us. Welcome to the program. Nice to be with you, Patricia. GDP growth is at 0.2%, but per capita GDP growth, which is regarded as a better indicator of changes in living standards, is in negative territory for the second consecutive quarter. This is the worst result since 2006. Do you take responsibility for this? Actually, the way you're reading those numbers are wrong. Uh, the uh, calendar year GDP growth is 2.7% and actually indicates that the Australian economy is growing faster, Patricia, than any G7 nation except the United States. Uh, when it comes to the health of the Australian economy, the fundamentals are sound. We're growing at a faster rate than we were when we took over from the Labor Party in 2013. Unemployment has come down from 5.7% when it was under Labor to 5% uh, today. And if you want to look at a good indicator of living standards, then real net uh, national disposable income is a better indicator, and that's up 2.1% through the year, whereas in Labor's last year in office, it was down 1.2%. Uh, real um, GDP per capita uh, and the talk of a recession okay. really is inaccurate because what is the best indicator of, of um, a recession is what happens to GDP growth, and that has been consistently positive. Treasurer, unemployment is up everywhere apart from New South Wales. Unemployment actually has come down. If you look at Victoria, four and a quarter to four and a half percent, the lowest level in many years. The New South Wales economy is the largest in the country. Uh, to see it under four percent is a number that they haven't seen since the 1970s. Okay. Uh, and the number of women who are in the workforce is at a record high. And the gender pay gap has come down to a record low. And as you know, it was going up under Labor. And then the young people aged 15 to 24, Patricia, the number who got a job over the last financial year has been the highest on record. So our jobs uh, growth record is really, really strong. Treasurer, economic growth doesn't mean much to most Australians if they don't feel like they have more money in their pocket. What's your strategy for lifting wages? Uh, tax cuts, investment in infrastructure, uh, having sta stable work places where militant unionism uh, doesn't uh, uh, discourage investment and, and discourage economic activity. Um, we have seen an increase in the wages price index, which is a euphemism uh, for wage growth, by 2.3 per cent, which has been the biggest jump in three years. But there's still a lot more work to be done. And I point you to the comments of the Reserve Bank Governor, uh, Phil Lowe, who's pointed out uh, that he is seeing increases uh, in wages uh, pick up in all states and he believes we're on the right trajectory. Let me pick you up on one thing you just said, Treasurer, which was tax cuts. We know what tax cuts you've already offered to the business sector or the smaller business sector now, given you've dumped your bigger tax cuts for big business. But is there more tax cuts to come? Are there more tax cuts to come? Oh, well, everything will be revealed in the budget, Patricia, but not only have we provided tax cuts for more than three million small and medium-sized businesses, but actually, in recent months, we've announced an extension of the instant asset write-off uh, and to increase it to $25,000. Sure, $25, Treasurer, but if I can interrupt you, does this show that the government has a reason now to hand out tax cuts to households under pressure? Oh, look, I'll leave the commentary to you, It's not you, commentary, Patricia. it's a question. Well, no, it is commentary. No, it's because not. It's a direct question. Do you well, think there is now a case? Well, you'll have to turn on your ABC on the 2nd of April and I see what happens will. in the budget. I've always got it on. But <laughs> I'd love to get your assessment. Do you think households need help more than ever now? And should it be delivered in the form of tax cuts? Well, actually, if you point, if you again look at the words of the Reserve Bank Governor, he said that our legislated tax cuts, uh, which we've already put in place, are for 95 per cent of taxpayers. I mean, let's not forget that we're going to see uh, no, you know, these people pay no more than 32 and a half cents in the dollar for you know, more than 94 per cent of taxpayers. That's an incredible achievement, and we've legislated that. Now, the Labor Party wants to wind that back and increase your taxes. Uh, at the various levels sure. of the income scale. But scales. I ask so whether you think households, taxpayers, deserve a further tax cut. 
Well, I, we've already legislated significant tax cuts, which will roll out over the course of a seven-year plan. As for uh, further announcements in this space, you'll just have to wait uh, okay. to see what will or will not be said on budget. I, I'm always waiting, you know that. Your government has promised to reduce the migration rate, but today's national accounts show that without migrants fueling our consumption, Australia's economic growth would be going backwards. Is it time to revisit that? Well, in terms of... Uh, immigration, as you know, and I've said this repeatedly, uh, it's a very important part of the Australian story. You and I are products of, of immigration to this country and, and proud to be so. Uh, we will continue to have a very strong, robust, generous but uh, your immigration policy, program. Treasurer, but your policy on the record is to cut back migration. And if you look at the figures, you won't disagree with me on this. Immigration, migration is the story behind the continued growth. So if it's the story behind it, aren't you taking a risk by changing that policy? Well, actually, there's lots of stories behind this Well, that's growth. one of the stories, isn't well, it? Well, well popul certainly population contributes uh, to economic growth by simply having greater demand. But if you look at the non-mining investment numbers in, the, in these national accounts, they're positive, uh, which shows that companies are feeling confident to continue to invest and, and to grow. Uh, we're seeing strong exports. And as you know, this, year, this week we inked uh, the Australia-Indonesia Free Trade Agreement, uh, which will be very important in strengthening business opportunities uh, for Australian businesses to export into that growing market, just like, as we have done with Japan, uh, China and Korea and other free trade agreements. So um, there are lots of reasons why we start, we're continuing to see uh, robust uh, uh, growth in the Australian economy, uh, not, and, and the government can claim some of the credit for that and with Treasurer, the free trade agreements and, and the other policies and Treasurer, we put in place. And Treasurer, what's your message now to bosses, to employers? Should they be giving their workers an immediate wage rise? Well, obviously, uh, people who run businesses want to attract the best uh, possible uh, employees, and they will pay to do so. Uh, those decisions will be taken uh, within, uh, you know, uh, within the companies themselves. Uh, and, of course, they've got to decide how do they expand their business? Do they open up into new markets? Do they invest in new equipment? Uh, do they uh, open another shop front? Would These you like decisions. them to see them increase the wages of their workers, though, given Bill Shorten says the next election is a referendum on wages? Well, I can tell you one thing, uh, that wages will not increase with $200 billion of new taxes that Labor's proposing. But I'm asking, Treasurer, with respect for your strategy. I know well, you're telling me what, what's wrong with Labor's strategy, but I don't hear what yours is. Well, with the greatest respect I told you earlier, we're about uh, reducing taxes and we've already legislated significant taxes. We're, in, uh, we're focused on delivering new free trade agreements with one in five Australian jobs uh, um, coming from trade. We're, interest, we're focused on um, getting uh, effective workplaces, not pitting employer versus employee and giving uh, militant unions uh, the, you know, the, keys, uh, the keys to the business as, uh, as Bill Shorten is promising to do, because we know how that ends up. Um, you see, we have a very different approach. Uh, we're in favour of lower taxes. Labor's in favour of higher taxes. We're in favour of more jobs and more investment in infrastructure and more free trade agreements. Okay. That is actually what has produced over 1.2 million new jobs. That is what is seeing Australia have a rate of economic growth, Trip. which is faster than other G7 nations except the United States. Treasurer, the Prime Minister has danced around the idea that a Labor government could precipitate a recession, but all of these economic indicators have started trending downwards on your watch. If there is a recession this year, won't it be your responsibility? Well, you're overlooking a key statistic, which is unemployment which is, continues to come down, uh, and the fact that uh, more women and more young people are getting jobs than ever before, and the fact that we saw over 65,000 uh, so full-time jobs being So you don't created. accept that there will be a recession? Well, certainly there won't be a recession when we're in government. But uh, why will there suddenly be a recession if Labor is in government? Are you well, saying there will be a recession if Labor is in government? Well, Labor... Pr Labor 
uh, is a real risk to the economy. But are you saying there will be a recession if Labor is elected? I will leave others uh, to make those judgments. Why but what are will... you leaving others to make those judgments? You're the be... Treasurer, I'm asking you. <laughs> because what I'm saying is based on the settings that we as a government have in place, uh, we will continue to see strong economic growth and more jobs being created. But you, you, but you can't say, can you, that you think there'll be a recession under Labor? Well, in contrast, if you whack the economy with $200 billion of new taxes, not an insignificant amount, Patricia, uh, if you're going to take $55 billion from the pockets of retirees, uh, if you're going to increase superannuation taxes, if you're going yeah, to increase income taxes... What will happen? What's your prediction taxes, then? What will happen? Well, well, uh, what will happen is you'll see less jobs, lower growth uh, and less uh, lower wages But you as can't well. say there'll be a recession, can you? Well, I would like um, others uh, to offer comment on that. But and why just won't some you? Because it seems to me like you're kind of dancing around it. You want someone else to say it. You're implying it heavily, but you won't say it. What I'm saying, you don't seem to be listening, Patricia. I'm listening greatest, very intensely. No, you, you don't, you don't. Uh, with the greatest respect, what you don't want to hear is the dangers that are posed to the Australian economy by $200 billion of new taxes. Now, if you're a retiree... I'm asking you to quantify watching, the danger. Well, the, I'll tell you, it's $200 billion of additional taxes okay. and it's lower wages and that's from the Centre for International Economics right, just, just who quick. looked at Labor's capital gains tax policy. Treasurer. It's from National Seniors who have looked at Labor's retirees tax policy and the list goes on. The Treasury told you to stop saying Labor's negative gearing policy would bring down house prices because that's not their view. Why are you misrepresenting Treasury advice? Well, we're not. But and you are, because we've read the emails and that's what they say. Well, actually, let me tell you what Treasury said. They said that Labor's policy could put downward pressure on housing prices and also that it could create real problems in a cyclical downturn in the housing market. Now, when Labor came up with this policy, and a few years ago when this so advice uh, or the, these, this comment was provided, uh, we, were see, we were in a different housing market. We've seen housing prices come down around 10% in the key markets of Sydney in Melbourne over the last year or so. Uh, the Labor Party's policy is designed, in the words of Chris Bowen himself, to okay, put down pressure about the on trend Treasury emails. And I'm telling you about the Treasury emails. But I've seen, emails. but I've read, but I've read them and, and they're in black and white on the ABC News site right now. So you can't contest facts. I'm telling you what they say and you can open up your, your article. But you have fact, been exaggerating it, haven't you? No. Well, let, let me take you through it. Five days ago, this story appeared in the Financial Review. So unfortunately, you're coming to it a bit late. Secondly, um, Treasury made it very clear uh, that the Labor Party's policies could put downward pressure on prices. Chris Poen says that is what it is designed to do. Treasury makes it very clear that it will compound the problem in a cyclical downturn in the housing market, which is what we're seeing today. The Master Builders Association have said that if Labor's policy is in place, you'll see 32,000 fewer jobs and 42 thousand fewer homes being built. The Property Council okay, of Australia... OK, but I'm asked about Treasury advice with respect. It wasn't about all of the other players. Well, the, the, I've asked you... about the Treasury advice. That was my well, question. But I just want to move on, because we are running out of time, to just two things very briefly, Treasurer. And one is, are you really pumping a million dollars into your campaign? <laughs> well, uh, everybody uh, who runs in a in a seat, uh, no doubt, invests in their campaign. Will a invest. million dollars? Well, I'm not. It's a safe I'm, liberal I'm, seat, apparently. I'm not putting a, a, a number on it, but if you want to quote the Australian, I am quoting that, the Australian. Yeah, and that's right. So I'm trying you to get. It. It wasn't my story. In fact, a, a former colleague of mine who I trust wrote the story. So I'm asking you. Is that how much you're pumping into a safe Liberal seat? Uh, we, well, I, I don't know what the, the final number will be, but certainly uh, we will continue to uh, work hard in the seat of Keong and I'll work hard to win the trust of my community, just as I've done at the previous elections. I don't take anything for granted. Uh, I work hard in my community uh, and I look forward to the contest at the election when it comes. OK, finally, Treasurer, your government has blocked right-wing provocateur Milo Yanopoulos from entering Australia. He held a speaking tour here in 2017. What's changed? 
Oh, look, I don't comment on individual cases. That's a decision that's come uh, through the Immigration Department. I'll leave back, it at that. But do you back that, that decision? Do you think it's wise? Well, those decisions of the Department and the Minister stand. All right, Treasurer, tried there, but you weren't going to go there. Thanks so much for your time. Good to be with you. That's the federal.